Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Sophia Sadie, aka Fairy Light. Welcome back. So, yes, I've been going through things. Have we not all been going through things? That's obvious. Okay, anyways. Um, so it was the 888 portal yesterday, and I know some of the astrologers are pressed because they're like, it's not astrologically aligned and all the stuff, and I, I understand that. I do. But I still do believe in numerology and the collective consciousness. We all agree to these numbers. We choose to incarnate on certain numbers to have certain life paths. Like, we follow these numbers even though it's not technically the correct calendar. So, it's still, everything has an energetic charge, especially numbers, right? So, you know, it's still energetically was an 888 day yesterday. So that counts for something, and I definitely felt a lot going on yesterday energetically, so I don't know about you guys, but I did. And also, Jupiter went and opposed my moon yesterday, so it's all a whole thing. So I'm going to a coffee shop right now, and then I'm going to go to Ulta. I need to get face cream, eye cream, face wash, eyebrow gel. Probably something else concealer because I'm always just running out of concealer because I don't use foundation I just use concealer on my face because every time I use foundation I just feel like I look a mess like I look cakey I just don't look as good so I just like to use concealer even though I use a ton of like all over my face I don't just use like you know I use it most of my face so <laughs> yeah anyways so yeah I'm gonna go get a latte coffee even though it's like 3 p.m. whatever I don't care I'm on my own timeline and then I'm gonna go and um, go to the beauty store. Yeah, David left this morning, well, this afternoon, to go to his race, his jet ski race. And I always think it's in Nevada, I think it's in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, it's Arizona. I mix up Nevada and Arizona sometimes, you guys, it's weird. Um, so, Aurora and I were going to go, but I think we just decided, like, we both decided that it was just not a good idea because I've been dealing with like mental health things because I've been like overwhelmed I just there's a lot going on postpartum is not easy and then it was gonna be 115 I just was not looking forward to that with a baby so I would just be trapped in a hotel room most of the time right I'm not gonna take her out in that heat so and then also the drive and I just like was already in it like I was at the top level of stress to add on a whole five hour whatever drive and then hella heat is just not <laughs> with a baby is not the vibe right now so we both mutually agreed that this is just not good for me to go right now and yeah I just need to chill like you know I've been stressed because postpartum is not easy like I feel good most days and then I'll just have one day where my mental health I'm depressed feeling I'm anxious and it's just weird because I'm, I'm like I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine and then I'm not so yeah I'm gonna get that dealt with because because you know it's not fun to live like that you know I, I thought I was fine but really I, I was kind of just like convincing myself I was fine because I do get anxiety a lot I mean I've always had anxiety my whole life but it's been more I think and then it's way harder to go places with a baby so some days I'll just feel so overwhelmed that I'm like no I'm not gonna go out because it's just too much like I'm already like overwhelmed trying to take a shower and get ready and get her ready and get her all happy fed nap change the diaper everything that like to also go out is just too overwhelming but I realized even though it's hard going out is what helps me feel better right like you shouldn't just stay trapped in a house which honestly most days a week I go out but I'm just saying I think I need to be going out even more because and taking her out and doing things because that's what I feel better you know and even though it's hard and I'm overwhelmed in the end it's gonna make me feel better so yeah it's just hard um, but we're almost to the first year mark and I think it's such a big accomplishment to get through the first year because it's definitely not easy it's a freaking like a battle not like in a I don't know how to put it. It's just like you just overcame so much and you created a beautiful new life, you know? And it's just like, it's such a reward to get to the first year, you know? That in itself is a reward. And so it feels like you accomplished so much, you know? It's like, yeah, it feels like it's paying off. So, yeah. That's exciting. I'm really excited for her birthday. I have a lot of family coming. And yeah, it'll be great. 
you guys, TikTok is freaking wild and like I would never go on TikTok before but now I'm making TikToks. I post seven TikToks a week now, maybe more but it's around seven a week now. And um, so sometimes I'll scroll for a minute on there but I really just for some reason I'm not vibing with like scrolling on TikTok. I don't like it. And like the people on there are so woke and liberal. It's like, oh my God, you guys are like... It is brain rot. <laughs> they're so like PC. What is it? Like they're like trying to be PC perfect. They're trying to just like placate and please everyone and be so aware and woke. And oh my God, look at their virtue signaling. Like everyone's virtue signaling. Look at how virtuous I am and aware and woke I am. Like that's how everyone on TikTok is that I see. Like in my generation especially. Like oh my god look at how woke and virtuous I am. That's like all they talk about. And like I'm so socially conscious and like look at me. Look at how amazing I am socially consciously. That's their vibe. It's like no no one cares actually. It's just the next person trying to one up you being more socially conscious and woke. No one cares. And it's, everyone's so scared to offend everyone. They're like, um, and, and this, and, 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 and oh my god, and it's okay if you're like this. And, 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 and Like, oh my god, shut the F up and just be yourself. Everyone's like so scared to even express themselves nowadays. It's like so cringe. No one gives a flying F. Stop being so scared. Like, everyone doesn't want to be canceled. They want to be looked at as virtuous. I don't give an F. Cancel me. I don't care if you don't see me as virtuous. I know who I am. Like, it's such, like insecurity it's sad honestly like oh my god the social warriors the social justice warriors that really only care about looking good to other people they don't really care about the social justice issues they just want to be seen as that they care and be seen as a social justice warrior and be seen as virtuous and not be canceled and be safe and be seen as someone who's a good person but they really don't give a f they just want to look like it on tiktok <laughs> that's the vibe I get from TikTok. No one cares, okay? You're not helping anyone either. Like, go oh, BMW, you just want to sit there. Okay. But yeah, you can only be canceled if you really give an F, and I don't. Because this Brooke Schofield, I think everyone Gen Z knows probably who she is, Brooke Schofield. She has like a podcast with Tana, who's actually like a huge YouTuber, was like the main big, like, one of the biggest YouTubers, right, for her time. Um, and brain is processing. Anyways, um, so I don't know where I'm parking. Is this closed? It looks closed. It looks closed. Mm. Anyways, so she's getting canceled right now because of her old tweets. I didn't. I'm not gonna get into it because I don't want people going and debating me in the comments and all that ish. But it's like she has to be like so. Okay, I'm not even gonna get into it. I don't really care enough. But it's like so cringe. It's like you have to live your life like apologetically, like begging for forgiveness. I'm not. I don't support her. Like she had to say, I don't support Trump. I already said I support Kamala. It's like you really have to say that. Like you're so worried about people like agreeing with you and supporting you and liking you. It's so pick me. It's so like insecure and like begging for approval like that is the cringiest ish ever like you really care if people know if you don't like trump or you do you are cringe that's the part that i'm talking about i'm not talking about her tweets or anything about that i'm just saying like really you just are so scared of being looked at as right wing at all that you're like oh i'm sorry because she accidentally she said she accidentally liked trump's post on instagram oh my god Worst thing you can do, right? Like, you guys are cringe AF. Like, I'm so glad I got out of the liberal cult because you guys are so effing crazy, cringe, like, sensitive. Oh my god, she liked Trump's post on Instagram. Oh my god, you guys need to go and jump in a pool of water because you are so psychologically insane. Okay, anyways. Gotta go. Okay, hi guys. So I just went to this cute little cafe that's by the yoga studio I used to go to. Roosevelt Coffee. Not an ad, obviously. But I don't even know. I feel like there's a Roosevelt in LA because it sounds so familiar. I feel like I've been, but I don't know. So anyways, now we're going to go to Ulta. 
wish. Yeah, I just I didn't even put her on the stroller to get out. I just, I know we're gonna go to the Ulta, honey. I'll just um. I don't actually really want to go to Ulta, but I need to go. Um, it's hot, but it's like, what am I gonna do at home? So I might as well just go. Um. There's some anxiety, you guys, and that's why I'm gonna go start going to see. Yeah, I'm gonna get my mental health in check again because um, I need to. Um, you know, I just think it's not a problem until you know. I just realize I'm kind of like really like lying to myself in a way that I'm that I'm totally fine because I'm not. I've just like learned how to cope with it because I've had anxiety for so long. I've just I know how to cope with it. Like I've heard Dr. Phil use this term. It's called white knuckling. You're just like white knuckling through it, which it, like kind of in my mind is like you're just holding on tightly, you know, like trying to get through it. You don't have to white knuckle through life. You can live a life of ease and happiness and not white knuckling through it. You know what I'm saying? Like he says, like you shouldn't have to do that. Like you should be able to get the help. So you don't have to white knuckle through life, right? Because you know, a lot of like, people who are addicted to things like they'll white, try to white knuckle it like you know no you need to get help right it's the same kind of thing you know that's why I love watching Dr. Phil or other um, psychologists or therapists because I actually have a really deep interest in psychology and so I always learn a lot when I watch them so yeah like I think I was kind of white knuckling it through life in a way like I was kind of just like oh no I can get through it I know how to cope I can handle this but honestly, I was—I have anxiety a lot, and it, keep, it does keep me from doing things, but it's like so, I'm just so used to having it that I don't even really consciously consider it anymore, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not really fully aware that I'm always, not always, but for a lot of the part, having anxiety. So it's like, why am I doing this, you know, telling myself I'm fine when I need to? I could be living such a more happy life. You know, and so why not just stop white knuckling it through life and actually get the help and get better. And I, I, I was, you know, I'm sixth house son. I was like very in my natural girl era, like no medication. Also because I was on antidepressants when I was like a teenager and stuff. So, um... I was like, no, I'm never doing medication again. I'm gonna do holistic, natural. But I've kind of like realized like it's actually not super necessary to be so natural. Like I, I was like not enjoying life as much trying to be such a natural girly all the time. Like it doesn't have to be everything. I have to do natural, organic, everything, you know, holistic, you know. Sometimes in life it's just not how things are. And I can get into that more in a different video. But it's actually not healthy to always try to be natural which just kind of sounds crazy right but it's actually not so yeah I just realized like I'm open to taking medication if I need to just because I've been suffering with anxiety for so long and it really has put a huge dent in my life I'm not gonna lie it's kept me from a lot it's, it's made me it's kept me from doing things it's just like you know it's just maybe someone I'm not and I've, I know how it feels to not have anxiety because I've tried you know, Klonopin before I've tried, you know, Xanaxes before. And what I felt on Xanax, I was like, wow, this is how people feel without anxiety. Like, actually, I can function and think straight and not feel overwhelmed. Like, wow, this is how normal people feel without anxiety. And, like, this is paradise compared to what I go through. <laughs> so, um, I would love to live without anxiety and I don't know if it's possible to fully live without anxiety but I would love to get to a point where I'm not suffering with anxiety to a point that it's affecting my life so much so that's the goal and I know it's possible so um I just don't like that they prescribe SSRIs for anxiety which I feel like they're antidepressants right and that's SSRIs is what I was on when I was a teenager and I never felt an improvement in my anxiety granted that is a different time in my life right but they're supposed to be for like depression 
I think the SSRIs do not work for me. And I know that's the thing that they love to prescribe the most because it's not addictive, exact, etc. But I just like, why is there not something that is not addictive that isn't an SSRI? Because they do not work for me. So that's the other thing. So I'm not for sure getting on medication. We'll see what happens. But I do know that I've been struggling with anxiety for so long and depression, not depression, but depression's come from postpartum, but it's to a point where I'm like, why am I just keep telling myself, oh, it's going to get better. I'm going to get better holistically. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to get through it. It's like, I've been telling myself that for so long and it doesn't get better holistically. So obviously something else I have to do you know like I gotta keep holding out and taking lavender and thinking oh yeah I'm gonna get better um not it's been years and years and it hasn't gotten better if anything has gotten worse <laughs> because of all of the like postpartum and stuff obviously it exasperates it but Yeah, I just don't want to live like this anymore. I don't think medication is the worst thing on the planet. If it gives you the ability to actually function and live a life that you're happy, it's worth it. Because right now I'm not fully functioning happily. Like I'm functioning as in I'm like getting most of what I need to get done and I'm being a mom to Aurora, etc. But I'm not at peace fully and like happy. I'm like anxious a lot and so it's not a way to live <laughs> it's really not so i'm excited for this new chapter i think that's what the 888 portal was for me even though i know some people don't agree it's a portal whatever i don't care energetically for me it was and um i think it's just time for me to just try a different way because I am not able to cure my anxiety on my own. I've tried holistic, so many holistic type of things. I do yoga, which helps a lot. I'm not gonna lie, these holistic things help, right? They help, but they're not consistent and they're not, you know, fully getting you there because it takes a lot, you know? And at some point you gotta think, do I have the bandwidth in this lifetime and reality to do all the holistic things that will actually cure my anxiety, I'm kind of guessing we might not. We don't live in shamanistic type environments, okay? And I also have done psychedelics in my past and other like things, right? And young I did things like that, right? Which probably changed the wiring in my brain. So. Am I able to function normally without some type of intervention? I don't actually know anymore, right? Because, I mean, a lot of us partake in things young, right? And it changes our brains chemically. So, do you think that we're able to actually be normal <laughs> anymore? I don't know about that. Well, they're doing construction over here. They built a freak ton since the last time I came over here. They like built a whole building almost. I was like, wow, okay. Um, so here I am at Ulta, living my best life. I, I personally don't love going to Ulta, but I'll do it. They're like woke up the wazoo, but whatever. <laughs> we gotta deal with that. I don't really care. I'm not into like boycotting right now in my life. I'm just like, whatever companies do what they gotta do and I'm not in the mood to go to Sephora like that's in the mall girl I don't have time for that all right we don't have time for that we do not have time for that okay so yeah I'm excited about this new chapter of a non-anxious life let's see if we can do it I believe I can and I just have to get to that and we'll do it so I'm gonna get the stroller for her here because I have to get a few things so 
Are you ready to go in the beauty store, Miss Love? Okay. Just checking my emails. Next. Eight. Okay, anyways, guys, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I just went to Ulta. Um, so I didn't find the Tatcha face cream that I wanted, but they actually have it on Amazon, so I'm just going to get it on Amazon. So um, I got the eye cream I wanted because I do want to show you guys my skincare routine because I think I have a good skincare routine and other people were wondering. And yeah, people have asked me before. And um, also, not just my face skincare, I'm going to show you guys what I do. Like, I do dry brushing. And then sometimes, okay, I'll, I'll tell you it when I do the skincare video. But yeah, so I wanted to get some of my skincare faves that I run out of. Um, so then I got Anastasia. I told you guys in my last video I wanted to try the Muted Mauve. Oh my god, this one's kind of bent. I don't know. Like the boxes. I was trying to go fast because Aurora was over it. So I got Muted Mauve. Honestly, there were other colors that looked cute, but I was going fast. So we're just going to try it since I told you guys last video I was going to try this shade. Um, and then... So this really nice lady was like helping me in there and she was like super sweet. So I told her I was looking for the Anastasia clear brow gel, like the stuff, and she couldn't find it. And so she suggested this one, the benefit one that has like fiber gel, you know, so it kind of makes your eyebrows fuller. I don't know if I'm going to love it. And I think I did see the clear one there. She thought she couldn't find the clear gel, but she was being so nice. So I wasn't going to tell her. I, do you guys ever do that? I was just like, I'll let her just show me this and I'll try it. Maybe I'll like find something I like in that way. Then I got this hyaluronic acid, which I love. I always have a serum, hyaluronic acid serum. I just ran out of mine too. And, um, then I got my Morphe concealer, which I've been loving lately. I'm in the shade light four. Um, I used to use the Tarte concealer all the time, but this is actually like, I like how this is kind of thinner and like more blendable and I just prefer this now over the tart, even though the tart is amazing. It really is. It's just really thick, so I kind of like how that's thinner. So yeah, that's what I got, and I'm gonna order my um, my Tatcha on Amazon, and that's pretty much all I needed. Oh yeah, I needed to get face wash, so I'll have to get that online too. A lot of stuff's on Amazon, but not everything. That's the thing about Ulta is like a lot of stuff at Ulta is not on Amazon. If you order on Amazon, it's like sometimes it will come broken or it's like older products so it's like yeah you kind of have to go to a makeup store to get what you need you can't really unless you i've ordered it from Ulta before but it takes a couple days and then it's just like i don't know it's just you know it's kind of like just better to just go in person sometimes if you want it right away so yeah kind of have to sir you can go okay he's stopping so anyways So next stop is home. So thanks for coming out with me today, you guys. So yeah, I like was in the Ulta and I like looked at myself in the mirror in there and I was like, oh my God, like I overline my lips because I love the big lip look. I just do. It's my vibe. And I literally looked at my lips and like the stuff had worn off and it just looked like I looked crazy. Like I just had like overline off. <laughs> crazy today people are probably like what the f is up with this girl with this overline lips like half up over her lips but that's what i do can't hate the player hate the game anyways i don't even know what that means but so i just love the overline big lip look and when i'm not breastfeeding i'm going to get my lips injected probably not good for you I don't know I don't get okay so the thing about me is I've had lip injections three times in my life I always got it a year apart so I got it like once a year for three years and now I haven't had it since 20 May of 2021 so it's been three years so obviously it's all dissolved right only got in three times one syringe each time so three syringes but it was spaced out and over a year each time so it's been three years since I got anything any injections I got Botox for the first time like actual like in my forehead because I had gone it for my TMJ right but my first and only time I got Botox was May of 2022 so that was like that's how long I've had without any type of thing like that so um I don't know if I'll ever do Botox again just because I don't know I, I have some thoughts on it I kind of like the gua sha and the facial massaging better than 
I don't really like like people who get hella Botox I don't think they necessarily look better than people who don't you know kind of looks weird so I don't know kind of looks weird when your face doesn't move at all like it kind of looks weird it doesn't necessarily look better so um yeah I'm more into like the facial massage but when it comes to lip injections I like that bigger plumper lip look so I do want to get my lips done again when I'm done breastfeeding um but I know some people are like oh my god filler never leaves your face actually like it just migrates I don't know some people have talked about that or how it's like it is hyaluronic acid which is naturally occurring in your skin right but there's one chain glyceride or something like chain of it is linked differently or something so it's just kind of different than the natural but it is natural right so I think it's harder for your body to process out because it's a little bit different so I don't know the lymphatic drainage of it all and stuff so that's the thing I've never had any issues with the filler, right? It hasn't migrated, I haven't had a bad thing, and I think it's because I only do one syringe at a time. I'm not someone who gets three syringes, two syringes at a time, which I think is what usually causes people to get migrated filler. I'm only ever gonna do one syringe at a time, just because it's just, sometimes it's just too much. I just need a little plumping. I don't need a freaking. okay? But anyways, <laughs> um, the girlies who get it, get it. But I'm just saying like, I would never do filler on my face, like on my chin. I don't think chin filler looks good, that's my opinion. I'm not hating on anyone who gets it. Like do what you want with your body and your face. If you like it, that you should do it for you, right? But from my personal opinion, I don't like the look of a long chin, like filler in the chin, I don't think looks good unless you have a really tiny indented chin. But I just don't think you should add to your chin. I get the whole like, oh, you want the balance on your, the side profile, but I just don't think it looks good. Like I would never do chin filler, cheek filler, under eye filler. Because the thing about it is the filler attracts water. So that place is gonna get more plumper even. So I get you're trying to fill in the eye hollows of your eyes, da 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 da, da whatever, but it's gonna attract water and end up sagging. So I would never ever get filler anywhere on my face but my lips because if your lips attract the water, whatever, they're plumper, then like it's not a big deal. But no, I would never get cheek filler. That's the problem I think that Kylie Jenner is having with her cheek filler, you know? Like it was a big controversy because her cheeks looked all messed up. <sighs> Me personally, I people are hating on her more and be like, you caused this issue. You were the one who, like no, she didn't. Like there's been beauty standards long before Kylie Jenner. Like I thought people were so rude to her. Like, saying like, oh, you can't, because she was crying on one of the um, last few episodes of the Kardashians, how people were talking crap about her cheek filler. Um, and it's like, people were so rude to her. They were like, you caused this on yourself. You brought this on yourself. You set the beauty standard. Like, no, she did not set the beauty standard. The, there's been beauty standards in every country, every place long before Kylie Jenner was born. You guys are so rude to her. Like, she fell into the... She was in the public eye. Anyone who's constantly on camera and constantly in the public eye will, and has money is gonna probably alter their look. So you guys saying, oh my god, how dare her set this beauty standard. She did not set any damn beauty standard, you guys. Just because she got her lips filled when she was younger, like, many people got their lips filled before Kylie Jenner, okay? You guys are just mad. And the fact people are so rude to her, like, you guys are so so like toxic she did not set any beauty standard you guys she just was herself growing up in the light in the light in the spotlight and she found out what worked for her and tried to find her look and her vibe and you guys are like oh you said this video like no she's just a human growing up in the spotlight trying to find her look and love herself and find her aesthetic you guys are haters like I can't with people like you guys are such haters like there's nothing I don't like the stigma of cosmetic procedures if someone wants to look better why is that a negative thing it's like you're allowed to go to the gym you're allowed to do this that and the third to look better dye your hair change your outfit change your look do makeup but you can't do co cosmetic procedure like I don't get why that's so a stigma like, if it makes you feel better, then do it, you know? Like, I don't think anything wrong with it. As long as you're not going overboard and it's not becoming 
a body dysmorphia thing where you think, oh my god, I need this to feel good about myself or whatever. But if it's something that's like obviously, I think it should be done very, very minimally and only as needed if you really need something, right? But other than that, obviously don't go overboard. That's what I think. But to each their own. I don't think there's a bad negative charge to it. People want to look better than look better. Nothing wrong with that. I don't think anything's wrong with that. If it makes you feel better, it makes your quality of life better, why wouldn't you do it? Don't live to please other people. Like, it's, it's for you. And it always was for me. People would tell me, oh my God, don't do it. Everyone would tell me, don't do like cosmetic things, you know. And they'd be like, I think you look better now than you'll ever look, or you look better before, whatever. It's like, oh, well, I didn't do it for you, so thank God, I don't care. <laughs> like, I literally said, have said, if every other person on the face of the planet thinks I look worse after, but I think I look better, that's all that matters to me, because I'm the one that looks at my face every morning, I'm the one that has to walk around with my face, I'm the one who, who it will affect my confidence, so if my confidence is improved by this it doesn't matter what other people think right so mm -hmm. it matters my own vision of myself because you can create anything from that but if you have a bad vision of yourself that's more important than everyone else thinking you look beautiful that really does nothing for you right if everyone thinks you look good but you think you look bad that does nothing good for you because you're not gonna have that confidence or that energy that you need to live a good life so it really has to be for you and that's about it and you know that's all and like most people get Botox or filler nowadays that you see in the public eye there's not many that do you do you think that if you look at actors from the 90s and actors now, the men especially, you can notice a huge thing. The deep set wrinkles that men used to have compared to the actors that now, they don't get those. Like you see that? They still have wrinkles like actors will get like baby Botox so that their face don't fully move. But they are still getting baby Botox like back in the 90s or whatever they did not do that. So you can see the distinct difference if you look at men the same age actors in the 90s versus not like they have way different type of wrinkles so it's like you think that just because their face is moving they're not getting botox no there still are like men get it women get it everyone gets it in the public eye right for the most part right so it just is what it is Anyways, guys, so I'm about to be home. That was a fun little vlog. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon. Cheers to that. Yay, we're home. So, yeah, um, talk to you guys later. I have got to, what am I doing now? Um, gotta order that stuff online, and then I really have to order groceries, so I'm probably gonna do that. And then I try to edit and upload this you guys for you we'll see how that goes is my hair looking healthier though and I told you guys I'm gonna get low lights soon so I'm letting it grow a little bit and then just like kind of blend it and only get like 12 highlights at a time right not get a ton and just like on my natural hair journey I'm also gonna show you guys my hair routine when I do my skin routine too soon so we'll see that because I cannot believe I used to not put oil or cream or anything in my hair like I am shocked I did not do this before like how did I not do this but I like do a whole hair routine now after I wash my hair and I wash my hair once a week now I might start extending it and do it once every two weeks we'll see how it is but once a week right now is working great for me you guys even like a month ago I would wash my hair like a couple times a week like now I'm like totally on this new hair healthy journey so my hair is gonna start looking so healthy so anyways yeah this my channel I talk about spirituality beauty and lifestyle so that's why I bring up like hair and skincare and makeup and stuff because it's like beauty is a big part of my personality in life Libra rising stuff so that's why i bring it up because i love to learn from other influencers about the beauty stuff they do and stuff so i'm sharing with you guys what i do um so anyways also my neighbors are moving out isn't that weird so uh, we didn't know but anyways um love you guys bye <laughs>